Hello, welcome to Anselm Griffin's uh, third tutorial on Watershed. Uh, we've already looked at two of them before. Today we're going to look at a more sophisticated version of what's going on. So, just to look at the problem we have here. We have the original image and we corrupted this original image to get non-constant illumination. So if we just look at this, this would be fairly easy to segment. You know, an edge detector would do it grand. But here we can see with the lighting conditions over here that things would be very awkward. So if we go on a little bit, as before in the part 2 of the tutorial we ran the Sobel edge detector and we're running the Sobel edge detector on the original image here, sorry, we're running the Sobel edge detector on this one here, the bad one, the one with the bad lighting conditions. And you can see here that we get a very badly segmented image. And as I've displayed here, or as I've commented on the code here, <coughs> uh, there's loads of local minima. So we're getting a very bad result here. And this function here, regional min, yeah, that's kind of the inverse of the one on the left we're getting here, but it's the same. Essentially, telling it's the same thing. It's way over segmented. So you want some way of trying to get over this problem of the over segmentation. So what we did here was, uh, on these few lines, now this you, you say it might be a cheat, but it's just an illustration. We wanted to illustrate um, the sophistication of the watershed with markers. So we put some markers in here, and I have, this is the image with markers, and I don't know how it looks like on YouTube, but I have the original one here, and this might look like nothing, and if I hit the zoom tool, I'm just going to zoom there, Zoom there, zoom there. So you can see what I did was at row 50, column 125, row 150, column 75, etc. I put in a white, a, a white one. So just to, sorry, a, just to uh, illustrate to illustrate that we have it here. So this image here, where the mouse is highlighted, is the same as this one here. I can get rid of that. So what we can now do is using these little dots here, just where I'm pointing to, we can get the watershed and we get the watershed from this line here. So these are the ridge values. Zero is the ridge and then obviously anything in here falls between this ridge and this ridge. So what we did then here on this line here was basically we got the inverse of this one here and we could see just it's just another way of looking at it. So <coughs> now what can we do? We look at the the image impose minimum function. So that's what we want to do. How does that work? So so we want the function image impose min to modify the input image so that only local min occur at the marked location. So we have here we use the function the inbuilt function im impose min on G with the marker location and we apply the watershed function and that's what the watershed function looks like <coughs> and then what we said was to find it to round it off we want to f highlight the m segmented areas here and how I did the highlighting was that I looked at I2 uh, sorry L2 L2 is the watershed from here and so what I've said was everywhere L2 does equal zero, in other words, around these here, make it 255. Okay, so I hope that gives you some idea of how we might be able to use the watershed algorithm and markers. Thanks very much for listening.